What's going on, my peoples? I'm at a park. I'm gonna do something a little bit different today, uh, just because it's not the typical thing that I, you know, record on this channel. But of course, you know, movies, film, music, hip hop—they're all intertwined, right? And The Matrix is one of the most hip hop films ever fucking made, despite the fact that there really isn't any hip hop in the movie. But there is like break beats stuff, like the Prodigy uh, music from the originals that is hip hop ish you know in a sense right or or takes elements of hip-hop into a, the rave and dance culture so the point is that um you know the matrix is something that brothers sisters like black people love the fucking matrix we really do um it influenced a whole era of people um and i would argue that rappers and producers were up on the matrix earlier as a cultural milestone than quite a lot of people actually so we of course have our opinions on it now um let me just say that, first and foremost, I admire the shit out of the Wachowskis. Uh, they are my idols. I got into the film business because of The Matrix, specifically The Matrix Reloaded. Um, I loved the first one, of course. The first one blew me the fuck away. And Reloaded, the anticipation and build up to Reloaded and then seeing Reloaded. I saw Reloaded six times in theater, okay? Six times. When I watched Reloaded, I remember sitting in the theater feeling that there were one or two parts that I, I was a little bored by. And this was my first, you know, even my first viewing. I went to see like an advanced showing of it. But despite that, I thought it was fucking brilliant. I thought the action was fucking brilliant. I thought the, um, the twist at the end where it turns out that their previous ones was fucking brilliant. I was sitting in my seat going, holy shit. And a lot of people were actually really enthused. I remember people screaming at certain parts of the movie because of how cool shit was. So when I started to see this like hate for the sequels, it was kind of weird to me because I'm sitting there going like, yeah, I understand that maybe there are parts you might not like or the parts that aren't necessarily, it's not as perfect and seamless as the first film, but let's not pretend like some of this shit is not brilliant. And people were pretending like everything about the sequels was garbage. And I've been a staunch defender of those sequels. I think the sequels are brilliant in many ways. I think they're more brilliant than most shit I've ever seen, even since then, to be honest with you. So, um, of course, I like Reloaded more than Revolutions, I would say, overall, but they're part of the same story. So let me just say, like, again, I'm a massive fan. They're the reason I got into the business. So it's it's kind of beyond just a film for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I think that the ideas behind The Matrix and, and sort of their perspective, uh, it really would inspire someone like myself who's a diverse creative to enter the business. Because there was something incredibly diverse and interesting about their whole perspective to begin with and what they were coming with, right? I mean, these are not your typical white guys writing, you know, writing stuff. You could tell, right? To the point where it's so fascinating that their stuff was so advanced that uh, a crazy sister, you know what I'm saying, tried to claim credit for it. And trust me, I know this whole story about Sophia Stewart who claimed that she wrote The Matrix and everything. I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally, I when that hoax came on the internet, the very first day back in 2003, 2004, whenever it was that it debuted, again, I'm a Matrix fan. I've been a Matrix fan for a very long time. And I remember seeing it, and this was back in the day when her email was, the email to her, I think, was even embedded in the link, whoever posted that shit. And I remember emailing her and was like, you wrote this shit? Really? You know what I'm saying? And I found, you know, I got her number. I actually talked to Sophia Stewart. So I'm probably one of very few people that actually knows about this whole Sophia Stewart shit. I talked to her. And at first I was like, oh my God, you wrote this. I can't believe the Wachowskis would steal this from you, blah, blah. But then as I started to talk to her, <laughs> I just started to talk to her. I was like, this seems phony. There's something about this is off. <laughs> this seems like some bullshit. You seem crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and obviously, you know, uh, and then very quickly I realized that I was talking to somebody that was not, you know, being a hundred, was being very disingenuous. So yes, anyways, the point is that I'm a big fan of The Matrix and I absolutely love the first one. The first one is fucking genius. The second one is mostly genius. Most of it is fucking genius. There's some parts of it that are a little slow, a little tedious, but overall fucking genius. And then the third one is quite good, I would say. There are parts that are not so great, but overall, again, very interesting. Some of the ideas they're doing, the fight sequences, especially the time, the effects, all that shit. So, what does that mean, you know, leave Resurrections for me? Honestly, I did not like this movie. 
And it was sad because in the first five, six minutes, I knew that I... You can always tell a movie has a certain energy, a certain thing, especially in the way that um, movies present themselves. I, I used to always wonder, I'm going to sidetrack for a second, but um, I used to always wonder as a writer, how can you know agents and people tell that a script isn't great in the first five pages? How can they just, I've written like 130 pages, 120 pages of this stuff, and they're just going to dismiss, they'll read one page and then they're done type of thing. And, and you know, to be honest with you, the older I get and the harder that I try with the screenwriting shit, the you know, faster I understand how this stuff goes. And they do have a point. I think that you can absolutely tell how good in the hands you are of somebody like, you know, are, are you dealing with someone who's competent with the craft, their storytelling? You can tell in the first five pages, maybe even the first page, first 10 pages, you can tell. And, and overall, if, the, if something about the beginning is not working, chances are the entire story is not working. And I just felt that ultimately when I was watching Resurrections, it doesn't feel like the movie, it wasn't made for me, in a sense, right? Now, let me get into this, and I'm going to say this, from this point going forward, I am going to include a few spoilers, so if you don't want to see any spoilers, you can end the video here. I did not like how meta this movie was. I don't think it was a good decision, in my honest opinion, because, again, The Matrix is something that is not just a movie, and I understand that, from the creator's perspective, they may... They may look at it that way in a sense and try to remind the audience that, you know, this was just a movie to a certain extent and, and play with it in that regard. And, and their relationship to the movie is obviously going to be very different to, for my relationship to the movie, right? So I just didn't appreciate it because I just kind of felt that it was downplaying the power of their universe and the power of their ideas. You know, I think that The Matrix is one of those very few films that actually says something. Most films, most entertainment doesn't say a fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Or it says things that you already know or already feel um, and is not, you know, edgy or interesting. Or, you know, it's just kind of like love conquers all um, and uh, family, you know, blood is thicker than water or something, you know, like we all like chocolate, right? <laughs> really basic shit that like at the end of the day is not threatening, is not interesting, is not provocative, it's not going to help you grow, right? Whereas The Matrix to me talked about control, the nature of control, how control adapts, right? Like the systems of control, you know, sort of adapt and warp over time, right? How fear can be used against you. I mean, these are things that I think are very powerful ideas. Um, and they speak to the heart of even, for example, if we want to sort of extrapolate into capitalism. I think these are really strong ideas that The Matrix has. And these are things, that's why people watch The Matrix, aside from the fact that it's absolutely entertaining and it's brilliant. But it attempts to say things that people don't want to say. Right. Of course, we're, we can even talk about the trans sort of uh, metaphors underneath. Right. I think all that stuff is brilliant, valid and very important for our culture. So to go meta with it uh, kind of, to me, downplays the power of it. And I would have loved to see uh, Lana just do something a little bit more traditional. Right. Like just in terms of their storytelling. Right. Um you know, just have like the fourth pickup and it's like an actual story and sort of not so much this meta thing. I, I just wasn't feeling that personally. Uh, is, is it interesting? Sure. To a certain extent it is, but it's also, I, I wasn't, I wasn't enthused by it, honestly. But um, I thought that I would say the biggest criticism I have is I did not care for the action. I was very surprised. I didn't think the action sequences stood up at all remotely to anything I've seen in the first three films. And I think that was a major letdown. I got to be honest with you. I was really surprised. And part of it is I don't know if the budget, I'm not sure how they were able to film it necessarily. That could just be budget constraints. That could be things behind the scenes that I'm not privy to. But of course, I absolutely loved the choreography of the Free Matrix. I mean, you Wong Ping was fucking brilliant that shit was mind-blowing to me as a person that grew up watching martial arts films who's a martial arts film fanatic and then seeing what they were doing in the matrix it was mind-blowing right so the action the beauty of the action the, the the ruggedness of the action all that stuff is part of what makes the matrix so incredible and why to me i've always said it's the greatest action movie ever made i said this 20 years ago you know what i'm saying and i still believe this shit i think obviously there are great action movies there's, you know, other action movies, even martial arts ones that are fantastic in their own right. But overall, The Matrix, to me, is the greatest action movie ever made because of the ideas and, and what 
and what they did with special effects and things like that. Anyway, so I thought that it was really disappointing to not see anything that um, the choreography wasn't staged in a way that was necessarily all that fascinating. They were okay, but it wasn't anything that was like kind of mind blowing. I didn't see any mind blowing new special effect. And sure, it's hard to create those things. I can understand that. But even if we don't have any new bullet time, what I would have loved to see is just even better choreography of the action. Something The action would have been a lot more interesting or something, right? Um, I just wasn't feeling that. So I thought the action was kind of a letdown. Uh, I thought some of the side characters were a letdown. They weren't as interesting, uh, obviously, as the original ones. Um, Tank, Dozer, all that shit. Um, yeah, so overall, I was very disappointed with this movie. I want to kind of keep it brief because I've been talking for a minute. Uh, should you watch it? Yeah, of course. It's, it's great. I mean, this is great movies from, from great filmmakers, right? So, yes, of course, it's worth watching. Um, but I don't know if I would necessarily rush to the theater to see it. You know what I mean? So, um, just being honest with you. You know, like, especially in these times. I would. It's COVID times and things like that. But uh, did I like the movie? Not really, no unfortunately and did i like the previous sequels yes of course i absolutely love the first movie i think the first movie is genius i love the second movie i saw it six times in theater the second the third one i think i saw twice you know so i, I like the sequels and i think that this was the um, most inferior of the bunch um, but you know i almost didn't make this video because part of me says well again these are my idols and, and i respect everything that they do really and I think that they take risks where no one wants to take risks and they actually want to do something interesting. Um, whereas so many people are afraid to and often they get criticized for it. And I hate that shit. I, I hate seeing people take easy shots at the Wachowskis and, and the people that fund them because it's like they just it, it's almost like if it's not, you know, 100 uh, percent executed amazingly, then it sucks. And that's you know, I hate that stance because a lot of people that suddenly have standards when they're judging the Matrix. Um, and saying, oh, the Matrix sequels suck, or this sucks, those same people will completely ditch their standards and, and praise some random Marvel movie. You know what I'm saying? That is nowhere near as interesting, and nowhere near as groundbreaking, or whatever, right? They just, you know, they're not consistent, and I don't like that, right? So I don't want to jump into the pile of, like, just, you know, just to hate, just to, you know, to make it easy. No, that's not where I'm coming at it from. I'm coming at it from the perspective of a fan who just absolutely loves the movie, uh, loves the series, loves the writing, you know, really admires the creators. Um, I, I just wasn't feeling it too tough. But I was happy to actually make it to the premiere. Uh, Keanu Reeves came and talked to me, which was really nice of him. Very nice guy, pleasurable dude. Um, you know, we, we, we chatted very briefly. It wasn't about anything in particular, but, um, you know, it was cool to see him in, in person. And he, he really seems like a genuinely cool, fun-loving, surfer, rock-on type of dude or whatever. So that was cool. And uh, overall, it was um, it was obviously a, a fantastic experience for me to, to uh, go to the premiere. So take it easy.